Greetings, Mandarin Middle School family. This is Principal Williams reaching out to say welcome. Welcome to our 2021 orientation presentation. We're excited about welcoming the students back to the building. It is our goal to provide a safe and secure environment for each and every one of your students while we push them to be their very best on every day. Remember, Hawk Pride is excellence in academics, athletics, and the arts. We are Mandarin. Welcome again, Mandarin Middle School families, to our 2021 orientation presentation. We hope you enjoy what we have put together for you. If you have any questions, please, please, please reach out so that we can get all those questions answered for you. At this time, I would like to take a moment to introduce our leadership team as well as our presenters for today. By now, you should know that my name is Moses Williams and I am principal of this great institution that is Mandarin Middle School. My assistant principal of curriculum is Ms. Nikki Bailey. Ms. Bailey is responsible for all things scheduling, course requests, guidance support, and her content areas are ELA reading and electives. Our assistant principal of operations is Ms. Lourdes G. She is responsible for testing coordination, exceptional student services, general student navigation, science, and social studies. Mr. Terrell Campbell is our Dean of Discipline, and Ms. Jennifer Duarte is our Dean of Discipline. This year, we're fortunate to have two deans, a Dean of Boys and a Dean of Girls, and they both bring um, excitement, care and concern for our students, and a strong ability to build culture within our institution, and we're definitely glad to have them. Our agenda for today as follows. We welcome message from the principal, which you have already heard. School Advisory Council and PTSA. Parent guardians need to know. Safe and supportive learning environment. We will work through these slides as, as you hear from our different presenters today. This slide is my favorite slide because it gives me the opportunity to talk about the great institution that is Mandarin Middle School. Major Middle School is one of, if not the largest, middle school in Duval County and North Florida. We are a very comprehensive school, which means we have a vast array of, of course offerings that allow students to not only engage in their academic coursework that is mandated, but their coursework of their interest through our elective course selections. We have received accolades for our visual arts as well as our performing arts. We have the best athletic program in the city receiving the best all-around athletic program and that award is based on championships and points toward that, that end. Um, it is definitely an honor to be a, the, the principal of this institution because we strive daily to create a culture of acceptance and a culture of excellence. Hence, the phrase that we use constantly, Hawk Pride is excellence in academics, athletics, and the arts. We are Mandarin. We are Mandarin is something that you will hear over and over, not only through this presentation, but as we continue to work together through our school year. And what we are Mandarin means to me is community, it means pride, it means hope, it means respect, it means all of those things. And I'm a firm believer that when we say we are Mandarin, um, we have to show care and concern for one another. And the way that we, we start that is by communication. Um, and so these are the ways that we begin to connect to our institution and connect to our community. That is Mandarin Middle School. Um, the, the first thing that is very important is for us to monitor our students together and we have the focus app and that's the first way that parents need to engage and connect and that allows them the opportunity to monitor your students grades that allows you the opportunity to through focus you can provide you can receive emails through focus you can get information that will help you not only engage with your students but engage with their instructors um, we also are working hard to try to market and show what's going on within our, our school community so please constantly check the website we also have a facebook page we also have an instagram page join join our community 
become a part of the School Advisory Council or the PTSA. Both of those are amazing outlets to have a direct connect, not only to administrative team, but to myself personally. We work through those meetings to um, problem solve, to collaborate, to communicate, and those that's an ex excellent outlet for parents. Register to volunteer. We want to see your faces. We want to see you in school. Know that there's a process that you have to go through to ensure that when it's time to volunteer or when it's time to chaperone that you have gone through the appropriate vetting process um, to make certain that that there are no no problems on the day of. So please do that and do that in advance so that you will be registered to the school. And become a business partner or a faith-based partner or a community partner. Partnership is real at Mandarin Middle School. We have some great partners who come in on a daily day-to-day -day basis to not only provide financial support, but they provide um, service to our, our building. And, and they come and they work hard and they support the community um, that is Mandarin Middle School and the Mandarin community in general. So please become a partner and donate. Donation is, is very close in alignment with partnership. Uh, we don't just want your, your dollars. We want you to give your time, your goods, your talents, whatever you can do to help support the school community. And in turn, we want to provide opportunities for our students to go back out in the community and provide those, those quality service experience. So um, again, we are Mandarin means so much because we are more than just a school. We are a community. We want to serve our community, but we also want to provide opportunities for the community to engage and help serve our students. On the previous slide, I spoke briefly about PTSA and SAC. I want to take a moment to introduce you to the PTSA president and the school advisory council chairperson. Ms. Kelly Jarrett is the president of PTSA. Ms. Jarrett is a wonderful leader within the building. She serves as an awesome li liaison between the school and the parents. She is always available. She works hard to ensure that our students have all that they need. So please join PTSA. Please, please, please. Um, they're, they're live and well at, at Mandarin Middle School. We want to continue to support and encourage members to join. Mr. Ernest Davis is our School Advisory Council Chairperson. Uh, Mr. Davis joined us last year and brought his ta talents and vast um, experience uh, from previous School Advisory Councils, and he does a great job leading, leading this group. This is an opportunity to, correct, to connect directly with myself and my leadership team. We collaborate, we problem solve, and this is just a great opportunity to have that direct line of, of connection to the school and engagement as well. So please join either the PTSA or the School Advisory Council or join both. Greetings, Hawk families. This is Assistant Principal Ms. Bailey uh, bringing you some need to know information for this upcoming school year. Okay, so let's start off with the different options for how the school day, the school week is gonna look this coming school year. So the first option that we have is the hybrid face-to-face -face model. And you've likely seen this image on our district website. It just depicts kind of a visual of what it will look like um, in terms of when your child will be attending on-campus school versus at-home school. So for our sixth grade students on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, they will be in the school building present in the classroom, and then they will participate in distance learning through our online Teams platform on Wednesday. For seventh grade students, they will be in the building Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then at home learning Tuesday and Friday. And then our eighth grade students will be in the building Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and at home learning Monday and Thursday. Now this is set to be in place until September 14th. Uh, however, if that date changes based on new information from our district or our state, we will of course reach out and let you know. All right, option two is our Duval homeroom option. And this is the fully online learning setting that is similar to what our students experienced during the spring of last academic year, uh, where they will participate in their classes through our Teams platform, 
which has been updated to more efficiently accommodate the needs of our students and teachers for this next coming school year. Students uh, will be enrolled at Mandarin Middle School and most likely will be staffed with our Mandarin Middle School teachers. However, there may be instances where another teacher from within our region also participates in uh, teaching some of our kiddos, but they will remain Mandarin Middle School students. And then of course, through this option, you also have the ability at the end of each nine weeks to determine if you would like to transition back to the face-to-face -face setting, or if you would like to remain in the fully online Duval homeroom setting. As it stands now through Duval Homeroom, students will be participating live during the lessons and they will follow the normal academic day. So if your child is scheduled into one of our teachers second period classes online, they will log in and be present online during the time of that second period class. Um, so they will be participating live in the lessons each day throughout the academic day. And then as updates are made to schedules and things of that nature, we will of course reach out and let you know. All right, as far as attendance goes, I wanna go ahead and let you know that um, there is still conversation being had about exactly what it's going to look like for attendance when students are participating in either the at-home learning days for the hybrid model or the at-home learning every day for Duval Homeroom. So let's start with this hybrid face-to-face -face attendance. So when they are in school, the same, uh, essentially the same rules will apply. Excused absences or tardies don't include traffic or waking up late, or if uh, mom or dad are, is running late, those, um, you, they will still um, be given unexcused absences or tardies based on those uh, reasons. Um, and then during the at, home learning days, we are still awaiting further information so that we can provide that to you about how attendance will be taken on the days when they are at home, whether it be a specific time of day they have to log in to check that they are in attendance or whether it will be through the teacher as they log into each uh, class that day. We're not uh, sure exactly how that's going to look, so we will update that information once we have it. And then the same thing applies uh, as far as making up work. Uh, any um, student who is absent um, more than four times in a quarter might be required to uh, take a comprehensive assessment to make sure that they can earn the grade for that quarter in the class. And then if a child is absent for any day that they are absent, they will have another school day to be able to make up the work. So if you are absent for two days, you will have two days to make up your work uh, once you return back to school. But it will be the student's responsibility to obtain their makeup work from their teacher. And again, as we said before, we're still awaiting further information for how attendance will look in the Duval homeroom setting. Um, and once we have that, um, we, will, we will give that out to you, but the same rules would apply in terms of being absent more than four times, the possibility of a comprehensive exam to make sure you can earn credit for the quarter. And then um, if students are absent, they do have the opportunity to make up the work. As far as student checkout, um, anyone that is checking out a student must be on their emergency card. If they are not on the emergency card, we cannot release the student to them, and that is for their safety. So if you are not sure that your emergency cards are up to date, or if you are not sure that it is matching the information that we have in our focus system, please call the school, please um, contact us to let us know that, we, that you need that information updated because if they are not cleared by our, by our records, we cannot release the child. And then um, of course, anybody coming in to pick up their child um, will be required to get a temperature check prior to entering the building. And that again is, is for everyone's safety. So just make sure that um, if you need to update that information that you let us know and we can get that updated for you both on the emergency card and in the focus portal as well. All right, and so for student medication, uh, if 
your child needs to take any kind of medication, even over the counter during the school day, we must have a medication release form with a doctor's signature on file. If we do not have that form on file, we will not be able to allow that student to take any sort of medicine. And again, of course, this is for their safety. Um, all medicine will be kept in the student services office. We do not allow any student to carry their medication on their person. If we find a student in possession of uh, medication, it will be confiscated, and there is a potential that consequences would be applied depending on the situation and circumstance. So please make sure that if your child needs to take any kind of medicine, even over the counter, that we have that release form on file so we can make sure we do it uh, safely and effectively for your student's needs. And of course, the note on here, all of our seventh grade students make sure that we have the Tdap shot uh, on file uh, prior to, to coming to school. Hi everyone, this is Mr. Campbell, and I will be going over the safe and supportive learning environment for the 2020-2021 school year. For the 2020-2021 school year, we will have two deans, myself, Mr. Campbell as Dean of Boys, and Mrs. Duarte as Dean of Girls. Our ISSP facilitator will be Coach Mobley. Our school resource officer will be Officer Lucas, and the new Duval County Code of Student Conduct will be available online. Student drop-off and pickup. Students are not to be dropped off prior to 9 a.m. and will not be allowed in the building unless they are enrolled in extended day. Parents, no supervision is available prior to 9 a.m. or after 4.30 p.m. Students may only remain on campus after school under previous approved direct supervision of a teacher, allowing your child or children to linger across the street or on the sidewalk either before or after school is unsafe. The next slides will be going over morning intake processes. In response to COVID, we have made several adjustments to the morning intake process. Morning intake for bus riders looks slightly different. Sixth grade students will enter at the racquetball courts and walk to the outside basketball courts in order to get to their classes. Seventh grade students will enter the doors by the gymnasium and utilize the gym hallway to get to their classes. Eighth grade students will enter through the doors by the auditorium and utilize the auditorium hallway to get to their classes. All students will be reporting directly to their first period classrooms this year and will not report to holding first. Breakfast will be served in the classroom this year as opposed to the cafeteria. Face masks will be required to enter the building. Temperature and mask checks are required upon arrival. Morning intake for walkers and car riders all students will enter the side car loop at Hornet's Nest. Once entering, students will have a temperature and mass check upon their arrival. Students will then report directly to their first period classrooms, and in those first period classrooms, breakfast will be served in the classroom. Breakfast and lunch for hybrid to face-to-face. Students eating breakfast will eat in their first period class and breakfast will be prepackaged and breakfast is free. For lunch, students will have 30 minutes to eat lunch. All lunches are no contact, prepackaged, and grab and go. Lunch costs $2.50 and reduced cost is 40 cents. Free and reduced lunch applications and menus are found on the DCPS website. IDs are required for lunches. Students have the option of receiving grab-and-go prepackaged breakfast and lunch for the days they are participating in at-home learning. Mondays and Thursdays, 7th graders will have this option. Tuesdays, 6th graders will have this option. And Wednesdays and Fridays, 8th graders will have this option. For families participating in Duval Homeroom fully, Students have the option of receiving grab-and-go prepackaged breakfast and lunch for each academic day. Pickup will be between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. Parents and guardians or students will need the student's ID card. Regular cost is $2.50 for lunch. Reduced cost is $0.40. Cents. First, you will enter through the front of the school. 
Temperature checks and mass checks will be required for anyone that enters and a station will be at the very front of the school to receive these lunches or breakfasts. Dismissal procedures have been adjusted for the new school year. Bus riders will be dismissed first and bus riders receiving grab and go food service will be released first. Next, the remaining bus riders will then be released based on their hallway. Next are walkers and car riders who will be receiving grab and go food service will be released. And lastly, walkers and car riders will be released by hallway. Face masks will be required during dismissal. Bus service has also been adjusted for this school year with a new process. Parents must register their child or children for bus service through FOCUS. As you log into FOCUS, you will be able to put in your address and sign up for a bus stop. If you have questions about this process, you can call the numbers provided on the slide or visit DCPS's website. In addition, you may go to our school website and a link with a flyer with more detailed information on how to sign up for the buses will be there. In order to facilitate a safe, efficient, and timely intake and dismissal process, please ensure your child knows his or her address and nearest cross street. In the first week, we will be assisting students with their buses based on this information. Riding the school bus is a privilege. If a student fails to comply with bus rules and regulations, his or her privilege may be revoked. Disciplinary consequences will occur for any code of conduct violation that occurs on a bus. Face masks must be worn on the entire school bus ride. IDs and face masks. District policy mandates that ID badges and face masks are worn by all persons on campus, including visitors at all times. Student ID badges must be in full view around the neck and face masks must cover the nose and mouth. ID badges and face masks may not be defaced in any way, shape, or form. Students must have an ID and a face mask to enter campus, enter their classrooms, and obtain breakfast slash lunch. Students without an ID will be charged $5 for a new ID. Charges will accrue for each subsequent ID badge. Misuse of an ID or use of another student's ID is a code of conduct violation. If a student does not have a face mask, one will be provided for them upon their entry to school. Students may not share or exchange face masks. For your safety, IDs and masks are mandatory for everyone. Hi guys, it's Ms. Duarte. I'm here to talk to you about dressing for success. Um, we will follow the Duval County Public School dress code and grooming guidelines and to promote a successful operation for our school. Um, obviously, it will be up to the site administration um, to be the final judge of appearance and appropriateness of appearance and anything that is disruptive or distracting um, or violates any health and safety rules. Straight from the Code of Conduct, this is um, directly taken from there. Um, and as you can read, talking about mesh garments, halter tops, tank tops, um, most importantly, the head coverings, but not limited to caps or hats, bandanas, um, hair curlers, sunglasses shall not be worn on school property. And obviously it includes scarves and head wraps. Um, however, you can wear a face shield, you can wear your mask, and you can wear neck gaiters that are worn around your neck and then you can pull them up above your nose and mouth. Um, the next one is talking about straight from the code um, about your pants where they need to be worn at your waist level. Um, you cannot have anything exposed, um, any undergarments, ladies, about your skirts and dresses no more than four inches above the knee and um, leggings at the appropriate length with a skirt or a shirt. Um, there are no pajamas allowed, no onesies allowed, no slides or bedroom slippers. Here's a violation matrix. 
Um, what we use this for is that if you forget your ID, as Mr. Campbell stated before, um, if you forget your ID, you have kind of a three strike policy. You'll be given temporary stickers. After that, the fourth violation, you'll be assigned to one after school detention. You will be charged a fee of $5 as a replacement ID and it will result in a referral. Um, five and six violations are two after school detentions on Tuesday through Friday on the assigned day and also again charged a five dollar fee. Um, violations several, seven or higher can result in Saturday school and still you are charged a five dollars for those ID replacement fee. Um, you want to make sure that you have your ID. I suggest you go ahead and purchase multiple IDs so you can have them as backup. Next, this is about cell phone use, and this is important for you to understand. Um, in the day and age that we're living in where everyone has a cell phone, um, and yes, we would love to be able to use our cell phones at all times, but it is not in the code of conduct policy that you can use your cell phone during the school day. That includes lunches and the restroom. Um, possibly you might use them for different classroom assignments, but that will be up to, to teacher discretion. Um, I, we want you to know that no employee is responsible or liable for the loss or theft of a student's electronic device. That includes tablet, switch, cell phone, or anything they choose to bring. They do so at their own risk, and it does not warrant an investigation if a child loses their cell phone. It cannot, um, it doesn't necessarily result in an investigation on uh, the dean's behalf. Um, if phones are available for students to use and student services if they need to. Here's the violation matrix. If a student refuses to relinquish his or her phone, it will be confiscated by an assistant principal or the dean or security given to the main office and can get it at the end of the day. Um, a second offense or more, a parent or guardian will have to come and retrieve the phone. It will be locked up in the main office and documented as the incident occurred. If a parent or guardian has an urgent message though, they need to get to a student prior to dismissal, please definitely contact the main office and they will get a hold of your student. Online etiquette. As we know uh, from March, we have been online and um, our online etiquette, should we use that platform? And we will definitely be using that platform, but should we have to use that platform again in its entirety? These are some of the things that you can review to your, uh, with your student about being responsible respectful, being aware of strong language, um, careful with humor and sarcasm and memes and emojis and all those things, um, even spelling and also citing your sources because it can be used as a code of conduct violation. You do not want to be accused of plagiarism or using any copying and pasting. Um, and do not share inappropriate material and definitely think before you hit that send button. Was it kind? Was it necessarily? Is it relevant? Um, is it something that I should share? Here are the more severe code of conduct violations um, for online etiquette use. Uh, you can obviously see that these are the more severe ones. Um, zero tolerance on, on these, stalking, harassing, um, lewd and uh, uh, offensive behavior online, cheating, copying work of others, obviously are one of those things that um, can be a, a referralable offense. Student code of conduct infractions related to technology. Um, any student is responsible for their own account, even if that account is used by another student because they shared a password or they um, gave them their username, they have to understand that they do not want to do that because a student is responsible for their account under their name.
students, and like I said before, will not share any personal contact information, location, um, their address, telephone number, anything that uh, any website solicits any personal information and you want to notify the teacher if you should receive some of that message or anything that makes you feel uncomfortable. Obviously Duval County blocks certain websites um, in a school-based setting so you do not want to attempt to bypass a, a firewall or any sort of security system because that is heavily monitored by Duval County. And students obviously will not use technology for personal gain, profit, illegal contact, um, conduct, and such as fraud, um, etc. Hello, this is Assistant Principal Ms. G. Please note, for the beginning of the 2020-2021 school year, we will not be expecting for students to dress out at PE. For safety, we plan to avoid the large gatherings in the dressing rooms and discourage any activities that will involve close contact. We will keep you informed when the time comes should there be any changes to this policy during PE courses. As we plan for the upcoming school year, we ask that parents, guardians, and students get familiar with Microsoft Teams. This will be the platform used for both students that are hybrid face-to-face -face, and online, as well as those students that will be solely all virtual through Duval Homeroom. General tasks to be completed through Microsoft Teams will include classwork, homework, communicating via chat or during live lessons. There are calendar invitations through Teams as well as through OneDrive and Outlook. Students will need to check their email daily as well as their Teams application to ensure that they are up to date on classwork and receive any communication from the school. In addition, students are also encouraged to use their email and Teams applications to reach out as needed for support and assistance. Outlined are some online resources that are available per each subject area. English and Social Studies has Achieve 3000, Civics has an online textbook, Science utilizes Penda Learning, Math has Into Math and iReady, while Enrichment Math utilizes Math 180 materials and there are consumables as well. With all of the information provided during our virtual Mandarin Middle School orientation, and with the upcoming school year changes, as parents and guardians, you are instrumental in partnering with our school to help your children succeed. This goes without saying during any school year. We encourage you to seek out your children's progress even more closely during these unprecedented times. First and foremost, we seek safety. Talk with your child or your children and ensure that there's an understanding of the importance of complying with wearing their face mask at all times, with the exceptions of when they're eating meals, of course. But there's also an importance in the social distancing throughout the entire school day. We ask that you monitor, monitor, monitor. Ask your child or your children how they are progressing, whether physically at school or online, Check their focus account regularly to, uh, to assess their progress and learning needs. Make sure that they have the necessary tools to engage in their learning fully, including access to a computer with internet, and talk to them proactively about safe and acceptable technology use. As always, feel free to seek out assistance as needed from our school. We are here to help. At Mandarin Middle School, we extend a warm welcome to you. We invite you to join our PTSA or SAC. You may also be interested in becoming a faith-based or business partner. At this time, we have not yet determined when our first SAC meeting nor open house will be held. As soon as this information is released, we will inform you via call out and place the information on our school website. We offer extended day services as well. If you need this service, either in the morning, 
afternoon or both time frames, please direct inquiries regarding Extended Day to Ms. Hughes via email at R-I-C-H-A-R-D-S-O-L at DuvalSchools.org. That's Richard S as in Sam, O-L as in Lamb, at DuvalSchools, plural, dot O-R-G. Parents and guardians, we will be holding a question and answer session should you still have some questions that may not have been answered during this orientation video. A meeting link is included below. Simply copy and paste this link into your web browser to connect with us. We will be holding two separate meetings, no need to attend both. We wanted to offer a morning and evening session so that you may select the time that works best for you and your schedule. These question and answer sessions will be held on Monday, August 3rd. The first session will be held at 10 a.m. and the second session will be held at 6 p.m. These will both be one hour in duration. Thank you so much for joining our virtual meeting. Now, a final word from our principal, Mr. Moses Williams. And that concludes our 2021 orientation presentation. I hope that this was a comprehensive display of information that you can utilize throughout the school year, but please do not hesitate to reach out if you have further questions. Also note that we will have an extended question and answer response opportunity that will be posted within this video. Thank you again. Remember, Hawk Pride is excellence in academics, athletics, and the arts. We are Mandarin.